It's your boy, Sergeant Hunting Heroes, ow, uh, here with another Brainsmaking review slash recap, this time for Osama Sentai King Oger episode 12. Um, I'm just going to say, with last week's episode being such a banger, this week's episode had a lot to live up to, and it exceeded that, and this episode probably cemented itself along with most of last episode as my favorite Sixth Ranger debut, and Jeremy may very well be my favorite Sixth Ranger, top everybody <laughs> we're gonna get into it but this is a really great episode um <clears throat> few notes uh for the channel for content this week uh clearly this video and then my review for comrade geats episode 36 that'll be pretty much it for the content for the week uh this weekend i'll be out of town to um uh with family for memorial day weekend uh and we're gonna be skipping a week for the podcast as well so no henshins and homies this week next week i think saturday is when we're gonna record instead of our normal friday um but yeah, so just want to let you guys know what the content is coming up so you guys aren't expecting something to come up when it doesn't. Um, but yeah, so jumping into the review here with the episode, overall this was a pretty decent episode. Um, my favorite part about it is how much we get of the deep lore drops connected to Jeremy and his overall place and everything. Um, leading off the last episode, we get him directly narrating into the camera, but when it, it they're so creative, they're so clever, when it switches focus to what he's looking at, he's looking at Gira. So it looks like he's talking to the viewers when really he's trying to talk to Gero, but they kind of blur that line a little bit. And I really like that. I think that's really cool. Um, so he's confronted by Gira and the rest of the team who are questioning him about who he is and why he's doing what he's doing. He mentions that he's Jeremy Brassieri, Jeremy Brassieri, and he is 2,000 years old, and he's um, if they know of the legend of King Oger and he's the one that wrote the legend, none of them want to believe him. Um, Himeno says something to him, and he like shoots a web in her mouth. It's really funny, a funny little gag. And... Uh, <clears throat> Rita's the most, like, dumb with his shit and basically arrests him on the spot, brings him to Gokan. When he gets there, he's kind of put on trial. She says, you know, what's your name? Jeremy Brassietti. And he, you know, gives the whole spiel again and asks her a question. He says, well, if you don't believe me, how would I know about how God Scorpion was stolen? And that, how would I know about this to ask you this question? Why do you think God Scorpion was found here in Gokan? And this whole, like, riddle, and he spelled out the riddle that was, you know, like, blah, 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 sealed away in ice, whatever he wrote, was his thing. And she still doesn't want to believe him, but she's starting to kind of question things. And she does a similar thing in this that she did with the stuff with Gira, where she went and looked through the records and then found out that he was related to Rockleys. Same thing here. She goes and does some research and finds out some stuff. So instantly he is, um, her palace is broken into, uh, Gira's there clearly, but gets broken into by uh, some of the butlers from Ishibana. They kidnap uh, Jeremy and bring him to Ishibana. He gets there, but in between we get a little scene with Death Rat, kind of Jim, kind of butt her over last episode and wanting to know where Jeremy is, where he stands, and in general, his place and everything, and what's going to happen, because they really do need Gira to control the Shoe Gods, but also, now Jeremy is a whole new threat. And I like this. I like how much we've gotten. Um, I'm pretty sure Death Narok and Kanajim have shown up in every single episode of the show from the very start. That's 12 episodes in, and for them to be in every episode and have a hefty part of it is pretty good. And for how much they've like encountered the team and fought them is really cool, too. Um, on top of the normal Monsters of the Week and the, you know, um, uh, henchmen is really cool. Um, it's really nice to see them be more directly involved. But we get to Yoshibana and um, we get a little sequence of Jeremy again talking to now Himeno, who he does compliment and he gives her the scorpion little, you know, shoe gods crystal thing. Um, and says, you know, says to her more about the legend stuff and blah, blah, blah. And she's kind of questioning things, isn't so sure she believes them. Um, but she's not 100%. And then he makes his way to Nakospa, and this is where things get interesting. So in Nakospa, Yanma and um, Shiokara have made a uh, lie detecting device. And they're using this to figure out if he's telling the truth clearly about everything. And so they ask him again his name, and he says his name, and a bunch of other questions, and he answers them truthfully. And Shiokara tries on the helmet, says something as a lie on purpose, and gets shot by lightning. So clearly it does work. Because <coughs> Rita questions it. She says, oh, it's, it must be malfunctioning. And instantly, Yama is, like, offended by this. And is like, there's no way my tech would, would, would ever fall apart like that. I learned from the best, blah, blah, blah. And Jeremy says, oh, you did? And he goes, yeah. He's like, yeah, so you learned from Gin, right? And he's like, yeah, how do you know him? And he's like, well, how do you? He's like, well, he was my teacher. He's like, oh, okay. He's like, I taught Gin everything he knows. So Jeremy has been around long enough that he actually taught Yama's master everything he knew about technology, which then he gave that knowledge to Yanma, which set up Yanma to eventually become the leader of Nikospa, 
which I think is really cool. I think that's a really interesting tidbit they've put into the show that in certain ways, Jeremy's kind of responsible subtly for these different leaders coming into power. I think it's really cool and that he's <clears throat> at least somewhat responsible for develop, helping to develop the technology to pilot the shoe guides. Um, so that's the most we get from him right there. Um, after this, they're all back in Shugadam running around and um, Dabowski is the next one to have a scene with Rakulis, going back and forth about Gira a little bit, and then more about Jeremy, if he knows anything about him. And um, they mention a sister. So, it, come to find out, big reveal here, Dabowski has a sister that has been taken kid, has been taken uh, prisoner by Rakulis. That's why he keeps reporting back to him so much and seemingly seems to be working with Rakulis on the side. It's because he's trying to do what he can to free his sister and hope that she doesn't die in the process. And I like this. It adds another layer to him that he can still use this man master manipulator deceiver angle to for a good end in trying to, you know, keep his family safe. Um, so after this, him and the rest of the team are confronting Jeremy again. And uh, he is, uh, he says to him, he's like, oh, he must be allied with the Bogner Rock. And they're like, what? Why do you think so? He's like, well, and all of them kind of believe it for a second. They're like, what's your proof? Jeremy says that, I think, or one of them does. He's like, well, at our last fight, I, your fight with Death Rock, you know, recently, I stayed behind afterwards. When that explosion cleared and the smoke cleared, Deathrack was standing right there and he teleported away. Clearly what you did was a fake and you heard the attack go fake. So it's some kind of like illusion type thing that he's capable of. And so he fesses up that yes he is and he was, you know, that he doesn't want all the infighting to happen and they're trying to beg him for more information about it and he's trying to tell them, beg them to figure it out. Like he's giving them the clues and stuff. And it's a kind of funny back and forth because, like, it's not coming from a place where he thinks they're stupid. He just wants them to be able to figure it out himself because I think he likes to nurture the gaining of knowledge. He likes to nurture further evolution and things like that. So he asks Gira, and Gira gets this little, like, zoom into his, like, eye, into his brain. Like, it's like a Jimmy Neutron brain blast thing. And you think he's, like, he's going through all these little memories, things he heard throughout the episode, and looks like he's piecing it together. And it comes back to him and goes, I don't know. Kira's just fucking Goku, basically. It's a fucking idiot. So Jeremy's like, are you fucking serious? And eventually breaks out the truth. So what happened was there was a sixth hero. There was a sixth hero who was part of the original knights who saved the world. And this sixth hero was excised from the legend because he committed a treasonous crime. An unforgivable crime to the rest of the world, to both Bugnarok and humans. He fell in love with a female Bugnarok. He got busy with one somehow. I don't know how that works. And they fled to Gokan on their own. They got busy, had Jeremy, who is a half Bugnarok, half human hybrid. And they were worried about his innate power he would have, having both of those combined you know, together. And so they sealed him with the mask. That's why he's known as this mysterious Spider-Man. Because Rita, I forgot to mention, Rita mentions records of this mysterious Spider-Man showing up all throughout history. So he must be as old as he says. There are like hundreds of like different points, different decades showing up and doing different things. He mentions he's responsible for telling the Bugnarok to wait underground for 2,000 years. He's responsible for hiding the shoe gods where he did. For many different things, he's been the one at the center of it. Written prophecies, written legends, all of it. And so his goal is to become the king over all kings because he says that he's not alone. He is not the only one like himself, but that others across this entire planet, across Chiku, are either hidden or are unknown or are shunned or whatever. And so you kind of understand where he's coming from. Yeah, he's doing it in this kind of grandiose way, but when he's been alive as long as he has, he's gotten theatrical and playful. And I kind of like that aim with him, that side of him, um, and that he doesn't truly want to hurt humans or Bugnarok, but I think he knows that he must, in certain at certain times, be willing to defend himself or defend the innocent from them if it's a situation calls for it. And I think it's something he's going to learn as the season goes on. Um, but Death Rock comes out, does a whole, like people in Santa online, a whole rantic from Time Force thing, pulls a sword, bone sword thing out of his arm, and he's ready to fight him. And we get the first transformation for Spider Kimonos. I fucking love the music for it, for the Komodo Slayer. It's just beautiful. The it's, I can't even do it justice. It's so good. What I don't like is the goofy fucking spider Komodo voice for it. Like, I'm not making fun of the singer. Cal. Metal Lucy, Cal, I know you're watching this. And I'm sorry. I'm not trying to shit on the singer. I don't like the take they did with him. <coughs> on this i think it was really weird and goofy and you can barely even hear him say it over the music 
Um, but the Kimono Slayer and the fucking suit for Spider Kimonos is one of the most artistically, beautifully, well-crafted, sick-as-fuck suits in all of Sentai. Bar none. Bar none, with, except for, like, Max Reels or Red, I guess. Um, the combination of the colors, finally seeing some other colors to break things up with the white, the black, and the gold. Beautiful. Him having a little waistcoat instead of having a cape is great to differentiate him from the rest of the team. While still looking like he resembles the rest of the team design-wise, it's just the language is a little different, right? Um, I love that. The whole fight is a fucking absolute choreography fucking palooza. Um, he's very graceful. He's using his webs everywhere. He's using his illusions, as Death and Rat calls it, even though some are and some aren't. And ends up poisoning Death and Rack and fucking them up again, honestly. And it's really cool. He's kind of a fucking badass. And I'm really, really interested in seeing where they go with him. So he ends up kind of shooing him away or whatever. And the episode preview for next week shows him again interacting with the team. And stopping them from kind of going after the Bugnarok saying, well, do Bugnaroks and humans have to be against each other? Why can't they coexist? Maybe we don't have to always be fighting each other all the time. So I like this angle and I want to see where they're going to go with it. I think it'll mean he'll need to defeat... Death Narak and Kanajim to f- like wipe them out to fully be able to allow the Bugnarok to live and to be seen as more than just an enemy. It'll take some grandiose thing of some kind. But it begs the question with him being a half breed, are there others? Does this explain perhaps why Gira is able to talk to the Shoe Gods? Does this explain perhaps the whole thing with Rita only having like one eye shown? You know, there are different things that could be explained by this whole half breed thing. Not that the whole team is half breeds. But that there are little elements of the team members and people connected to them that might be explained by this. Um, also kind of worried about what's going to happen with uh, Dabowski's sister. Um, if we're ever going to see her physically. If we do, is she maybe ever going to join the team? Or the, I know um, Zio Agato mentioned, which I think would be really cool. Uh, in his review, Zio Agato said, what if they did something like in Go Ranger where the yellow is replaced, you know, the actor for yellow is replaced on the line with a different character? What if they did that? What if Dabowski's either debilitated or even killed and they switch him out for this other girl and she becomes the new Hachi Oja or a new King Oja in general? Who knows? Maybe it won't be anything. I don't know. But it's really cool that this is the reason of the hold that Rockules has on Dabowski because it never really made sense to me. He seems to be a very cold and, or not cold, a very calculated and very intelligent person so to see him around Raculation just giving him all the information he wants was odd something's got to give there's some reason as to why it's happening well now we have it um but overall this is a fantastic episode absolutely a 10 out of 10 for me score wise um i love jeremy's character in this i love him interacting with each of the team members in their respective kingdoms slowly putting you know throwing the little pieces out there to his backstory and why he does what he does and i love his overall place in the lore that he's kind of the reason things got set up both the bugnarok the shoe gods and the humans and his whole thing of being half bugnarok half human yeah i sort of maybe called it as a possibility but I do really like the idea, and I'm hoping that they do something really cool with it. Because he has the possibility and the potential to be one of the best sixth rangers I've ever seen in this entire franchise. And that's really saying something. There's only, there's not, not every sixth ranger has been absolutely balls to the wall amazing. There's some awesome ones, but there's some not so great ones too. So I'm really hoping that they do a lot with him, especially with how deeply connected, like I said, he is to the lore of the world and how things work but also to the character stories in general and how they attained their power. In a certain sense, he's kind of responsible. Um, So I really like the episode. Lots of really good standout moments, funny lines and stuff like that. Fight Choreo was great in his debut fight. So absolutely a 10 out of 10. Um, But let me know in the comments below, what did you guys think of this week's episode of Osama Sentai King Oger, episode 12? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you in the middle? What were some of your favorite moments or things from it that you really enjoyed? Where do you think they might be going with Jeremy overall character-wise? Do you see an endgame where he is the king of all kings, or what exactly? Um, Again, I'm really interested. I've been seeing a lot more comments on the videos, long comments and comments in general, so thank you guys for that. And sharing and commenting and liking and all that good stuff, watching the videos. Thank you guys very much. Subscribing, it means a lot. It really does. It's nice to have this nice little platform where I can come at the end of my day or my week, watch these shows, and blab out all my thoughts on them. It really means a lot to me. Um, yeah. Um, oh, I forgot to mention. So next week, Wednesday, as we're recording this, is May 31st, which is the day that uh, Shin Kamen Rider is premiering in the United States. I have secured my tickets along I a ticket for myself along with a ticket for my very best friend. Um, my very best friend, uh, 
uh, Dova Keach or Tyler. Um, he's the best man at my wedding. Just known him forever. We're going to hang out all day and then go see that. So it's going to be great. Um, so really excited to hang out with him, be able to see it. Um, I probably, I'll try to take some pictures and post on Twitter if there is anything there. I don't know if there'll be any promotional posters or anything for it. But um, I'm definitely going to post a review once, I'm, once I've seen it um, to kind of talk about it a little bit um, and give my thoughts overall. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm really excited. I'm really pumped. I have the whole day off from work, and I'm going to get a few things done in the morning. I'm going to pew off to where he lives and hang out with him for most of the day and then go see the movie, get some good food, and just bro out and have a great time seeing this movie together. So I'm really excited for it. But, um, as always, stay hooked on heroes. I will talk to you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>